one moment can change your whole life and it happened to me. One shot changed everything. Just like that. You know, a dozen years of hard work <laughs> landed on one moment and that changed the whole trajectory of my life. And uh, that was the albatross. So it's round three, Beaver State Fling 2016. I'm on the lead card with Ricky Wysocki, Kyle Crabtree and Nate Sexton. And in normal Rick fashion, just like he's still doing to this day, he comes out and smacks all three of us in the mouth in the first four or five holes and starts to open up his lead to, I think, three. It was a pretty tight race coming into that round, but I remember uh, those first few holes, he started to stretch his lead out. And we got to hole six west on Milo McIver, the par five, 850 foot, double turning fairway, hidden basket around the little corner at the end. And every time I'd practice this hole, a little bit of extra backstory. I've played this hole with Ken Climo, with Dave Felberg, with some of the, the game's greats, you know? And every time they would tell me, if you're gonna make a mistake on this shot, you make the mistake, on the right tree. Don't make your mistake on the left trees because it's a jungle in there and you can't even see the basket. You can't progress. You're going to pitch out backwards, pitch out, and the best you can do is salvage five. So the play has always been to hang that thing out there with something really understable. And if you make your mistake, you make it on the right side in the right trees, on the right side of the fairway, anything right. We all tee off and when I threw my shot, I didn't like it that much. I really wasn't too impressed. I thought I left it too far to the right. I wasn't going to have the angle that I wanted to try to attack the green. I don't think I'd actually ever landed on the green of hole six west, even in practice, to have an actual look at eagle three. But I knew in that moment and, that, and during that round, I had to try to, to keep up with Rick or it would be over a third of the way through round three with, you know, a round and two thirds left to play. And I just, I wasn't ready for that to happen. And I got up to my lie and I'm looking at this shot and I'm thinking if I do that play and Ricky's 80, 90 feet in front of me and he had pretty much a straight hyzer over the Christmas tree, I was thinking, yeah, Rick's probably gonna pimp this shot. So I gotta try to get on the green. And I knew the discs that I had been throwing were only gonna travel to the right. I knew that they weren't gonna have any hookup at the end. I know I gotta try something a bit more stable. So I beefed up in stability. I grabbed this destroyer up that my buddy Josh Barnhill tossed to me and said, I think you're gonna like this disc. And I knew it was a little bit more stable than the other discs I'd been throwing in practice. And I just told myself, throw the same shot that you normally do and trust the disc. I just took a deep breath, focused on the spot I wanted the disc to fly. I hit the line about as pure as I could have thrown it. And all I could do was watch. Fight, I'm yelling at the disc, turn left, man. Don't go right, turn left. And sure enough, that thing hooked around the corner and I turned my back and I had no idea what it happened. <laughs> I just thought I'd have a look at an Eagle 3. And sure enough, Ian from Central Coast, he turns around and he looks back at me and he goes, it's in the basket. And I go, whatever, man, nobody makes a two on this hole, nobody. Like, it, it hasn't been done. Like, don't pull my leg, dude. I'm on the lead card, you know, we're friends. We've been talking for a while. And he's like, no, it's in the basket. And I'm like, I'll believe it when I see it. So I had about 10 minutes to wait till I actually saw my disc, but I'm just pacing around in the fairway. I watched Ricky throw his second, Kyle throw his second, Nate throw his second, and then we still had to walk up the hill and wait for, I believe it was Rick to throw his third shot. And it wasn't until I kind of walked around the corner of the video that everybody seen where I actually saw my disc in the bottom of the basket, where I took my hat off and disbelief is really what it was. I was like waving to everybody. I was just like, I can't believe that just happened. I was in shock, honestly, and uh, yes. then I jogged over to the basket, I gave it a hug, pulled my disc out, waved to the fans, thank you very much, and I didn't even think about what could be after that moment. I still had 12 more holes of that round to play to try to keep pace with Rick, and of course he stretched out his lead again <laughs> a few holes later. And, I ended up taking second place in the tournament, and I was proud of that finish. It would have been nice to win. That would have really capped things off. But one shot, one moment. 
changed everything. It opened up the whole world of disc golf to me, just like that. This is the disc that did it, everybody. This is a pre-Avery Star Destroyer. Kind of got a nice little swirl to it. You can't really see it very well, but it's in there. A couple of little different shades of yellow and whites kind of blended in there. Very poppy top. It's only 168 grams, which is right up my alley. I don't throw 70 miles an hour, so max weight does me no justice. This is the disc that changed my career. It changed the trajectory of my life. I know I'm not the longest thrower on the planet. That was at the end of my rope. Honestly, like I couldn't throw the disc any harder. That was it. You know, I put every ounce of passion and desire and care and hard work into that one shot and everything worked out. It was like a shot out of a daydream. They had it playing on the big screen over there in Tournament Central and it was just on replay. You know, just all afternoon and people were just huddled up around the TV just going, that's incredible. And I'm just like, you're telling me, you know what I mean? Like, I had no idea it even went in the basket. And I said it before, I'm happy I didn't watch it go in the basket. I would have lost my you know what. I would have been the most embarrassing moment of my life probably if I had watched that go in. Because I would have been doing the, you know, the rodeo, ride the bull. I would have been hooting and hollering. I would have, my, my adrenaline would have been so jacked up. I don't know how I would have finished that round. Is it, I don't know how much more exciting it gets than that. And what happened after that was like a whole nother whirlwind of excitement and not knowing what was gonna come next. You know what I mean? After it actually got on ESPN and then all the other media groups picked up on it and all the other news stations around the world that showed it. And that may have been who knows how many millions of people's introduction to disc golf. Couldn't, you couldn't ask for anything cooler than that. That's for sure. That's for sure. Not about me, it's about all of us, you know what I mean? I might have been that guy for a moment, but that opened the door to this whole community of people for a lot of people. That's super cool. That's super like special to be a part of that, for sure. 100%. I'm a person just like you. I just had one really awesome moment. You know, and you never know when yours is coming, so always be ready. If there's one thing I'm missing, it's some kind of a world, some kind of a major win, some major accolade. If you looked at my career, that's like the one thing I'm missing. For most players, that validates the effort and the struggle, the dedication, the commitments, the sacrifices. Winning a major does that for them. And I've, believe me, I wanted that too. I still want that. But, uh, this is just as validating as any of that to me. It uh, reaffirms I'm doing the right thing. And that's all you can ask for out of life, right? Is just to be able to do what you love. And here we are. <laughs> Pretty awesome. The next season being bumped onto Innova Star Team created the opportunity and the, the funds were there, the, the Abilities were there, you know, like the time was there. I didn't have to worry about coming back to LA and going to work. That was all done. Um, you name it, I got to do it. If it was being an ambassador on some kind of level, going to places where disc golf was kind of relatively new maybe, and they needed a, a name to help them bring it along, I was the guy for a while. It didn't stem from, the, from that one shot, I wouldn't say, but all of that stuff that led up to that one shot and then carrying that torch forward afterwards was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer. It was, the path was set from there. I'd done all the work to get where I wanted to go. And then I did the thing that I needed to do in that moment that got me over the edge and I have taken full advantage of it from that day. I have been on the road nonstop for five years and I have loved every minute of it. No matter how crappy I play or how awesome my game is, I love golf. I love to compete. There's nothing else I'd rather be doing. You know, maybe flying. If I could fly, if somebody would say, oh, here's an F-22, I would do that instead of play disc golf all day long. Sorry, guys. That's way cooler. But second choice, disc golf, athletics all day long. And I'm so happy I found this game. I'm happy the game found me is really what happened. I didn't find disc golf, it found me. And disc golf has embraced me and I earned my place in this, in this game. And uh, very proud of that. Very proud of that.